Well, I'll say this. I don't know about Chicago specifically, but I do know that the statistics for black folks in the United States, and it's based on per 100,000 people, is way less violence today than there was in the 50s and in the 60s. And, and it shot up in the 70s and went back down. So it's way less violence than it was in the 70s. So this discussion is part of this, I, I believe, is part of this, uh, you know, shell game where they're making us look at the wrong thing. Because in, unless we're saying that the violence moved all to Chicago, then I would wonder, I would, I would probably bet that the violence is similar, you know, in black communities as far as the relationship of it to the past. Question is, what is this, where does this discussion lead us? This discussion leads us to something that says, you know, to militarize communities of color and to also not look at what is actually causing violence. A lot of the racist stereotypes about black folks are, are, are put out by like a lot of these like, you know, nonprofits that should know better, but they're, they're not, their mission statement doesn't allow them to address the real issues. White kids sell dope too. White kids have all the, these things going on in their whole life, but we're not, we don't look at that sort of thing. The truth is it's from a similar perspective that they, that there's violence going on in those communities because they're hustling to survive as well. And that's the, the secret that, you know, when they put that out there, what does that say to the rest of the white working class? Like, oh, maybe we don't have it so good. I remember I used to have friends that parents were making 20,000 a year. And this is in the Bay Area, expensive place to live. And they're like, yeah, we're middle class because they teach us that, that whole idea of middle class is bullshit in the first place, you know? But like everybody thinks that they're not in poverty because they think of this like picture of poverty as like sleeping on a dirt floor and you know, this and that, you know, but that's one picture of poverty for some parts of the world. There's violence going on all over the place. And I'll put it like this, I've toured around the world and there's some, some truths that hold still. No matter where you are in the world, on a Friday night, people are calling each other, asking what's going on tonight. No matter where you are in the world, you know, you turn on some good music, people are gonna bob their head and dance. No matter where you are in the world, people need to eat. And if they don't have a job, they're going to hustle and do whatever they have to do to get some money in. The truth is most violence is related to something directly economic, right? It's most, you know, it's somebody getting mugged, somebody, you know, that sort of thing. A dope deal gone wrong or something, you know, even like kidnappings or whatever. It's usually related to something that has to do that with that. Then there's other things that come from the culture that come out of that. And that exists in all communities as well because of a lack of history, understanding of history, they find themselves repeating steps that have already been taken when all they have to do was pivot from what Dr. King already did. Any obstacle or any form of adversity is gonna make you a better person. When you come out of it on the other side, you're not gonna wanna hear that at, at, at the front of it. Everybody should always aspire to be the person that they're not and do what it takes to become that person. There's madness and miseducation. When you're telling somebody half of the story and you're lying to black kids about who they are, you're not telling them, you know, that they would come from kings and queens.